Welcome to How We Grow, an essential playbook to grow and scale your vacation rental business with advice and insights from the best in the biz with your host, Linnell Gordon. Welcome to How We Grow, the vacation rental show. Today, I am honored to have a very special guest and friend who is one of the most remarkable women in vacation rentals today. She has a lot of experience with vacation rentals. She's done tours all over the world. She's a member of VRMA. Susan Doyle has been in this industry for over 20 years in vacation rentals, and she owns a company called Commendable Rentals. Uh, Now, let me tell you about this. Okay, so Commendable Rentals is unique, guys. It's based in South Carolina, but she's in Italy and France. She also offers selected prime vacation rental properties, Austria, Spain, South Africa, Germany, U.S., um, and I honestly don't know where else. And she does this other cool really thing, guys. She offers tours. If you're looking for someone that loves people and enjoys what she does, one of the most elegant, graceful people I know. Susan, thank you for coming. And now I'm really honor grateful. is all mine. And um, I don't deserve nearly all any of that praise or certainly not oh, yes, all of you. it. Uh, yes, you thank do. you so much for having me. And I look forward to talking to you. What so you Susan and I have tried to meet a bunch of times in, in Rome <laughs> because I get to travel a bit with my husband and we've missed each other every time. So hopefully this year will be the year or I this spring, we'll see. Training. Absolutely. <laughs> so where are you right now, Susan? Right now I'm in Rome. Okay. Um, in my in my office, which is also my pied de terre here and um, where I love being. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, we're excited. I'm very, very excited. My team was excited too, but um, I'm excited because I don't know anyone who manages the properties like you do all over the world. And you do it with Grace and a plum. I remember when you were looking for a property management software that would allow you to do some things in currencies, and you were uh, you were really down and dirty seeking. I mean, you're you're just like getting in the gritty nitty. What does it do? How does it do this? How can it do that? And um, so we want to talk today about growth, and this is called how we grow. Recently, when you and I were talking, you have a really unique take on this. Tell me your take, Susan, on growth of the company. I, I think that you're referring to when I said that growth is a good thing, mm-hmm. but it isn't everything. Right. And you said and something, this is what uh, you said you to grow me. Too and much, too fast, you might lose some of the things you love. There you are. That's what I wanted. If you grow too big or you grow too fast, you might lose some of the things you love. And it's obvious you love what you do. So, well, let me ask you this. If you had one piece of advice that you could give to property managers, who are looking to grow their company or looking to create a a stable, sustainable lifestyle with their properties. What would you say to them, Susan? I think they first have to look at what their own strengths are and really what they love. Because if you're going to have your own business, you'll work far more hours than if you work for someone else. And you better love what you love, what you're doing or it's not going to be fun. It's going to be, and and if it's not fun, you won't succeed. So you have to, first of all, assess your strengths, Mm -hmm. figure out what you're good at and what you love. I love dealing with people. I love hospitality. And I actually like technology. I'm not that good at it, but I've figured (laughs) out a lot for someone my age. And, um, uh, but I don't like playing with numbers. I don't like accounting. So I have to delegate that, and um, and I do, but I wouldn't want to build my business just around technology and growth and numbers because I wouldn't be a success at it. And it's so obvious me, that yeah, growth is great. You know, I you know my company is sort of the lower end of medium. Um, it's not a huge company and it's never going to be a huge company because I would lose the connection with both my owners and the people that, that come and rent. And obviously I'm not in touch with every person that rents, but I'm in touch with a lot of them. And, and I have other people that are in touch on the same basis in the same way and make a connection with the rest. 
So um, I don't want that lost. So th there, there'll be a limit to how, to how big I am. And, and I'm not quite all over the world, mostly in very various spots of Italy and France. And as, as you mentioned, I have this love for South Africa. And so I, I do plan on growing the business down there so I can spend more time there and be more in touch with people down there. Well, my stepdad's but, from South it, Africa, it, so I plan to come visit you there. Just so you oh, know, I know I've threatened before, but really, when you offered, I am going to do that. It's okay. I have to go here at this point, simply because you brought up animals. One of the fun facts that our team, when they were looking into your background is they said on a recent safari holiday, their company managed to ca capture footage of a family of cheetahs bathing. Oh, and they, they sent me a link to it. And I was like, what? Is it the one with the, um, sort of like a fountain and they were jumping in the fountain? Yes. Oh, that was that was actually a, a, not this year's trip, but an earlier trip. But yeah, and then and then on top of that, these big uh, buffalo, who are one of the most dangerous animals in Africa, came up and said, no, 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 this is our water hole. We're going to drink here. And um, the cheetahs didn't want to leave. Yeah, no kidding. I, even I know about water sure hole. has to do with vacation rentals, but there you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, not everything has to have, uh, <laughs> has to do with vacation rentals. So if you had, so your, your advice is to love what you do for sure. So on a technical basis, because I know you say you're not technical, but you ask questions like a technical person, Susan, I know because, uh, you've asked me. <laughs> so tell me <laughs> what was most important when you were managing vacation rentals in, in different areas in different countries, even, you have one property management software, correct? Tell me how you yeah. chose your property what, management one, you company. Say? You have one property management um, company, right? For the moment, for the moment, yes, that's right. Though I have added a lot of pieces to it, like pricing and guest notes. And um, for me, the most important thing was how they could deal with cross, as you mentioned earlier, with um, cross currency. Holes. Mm -hmm. And it's still not an easy problem to solve. There aren't a lot of choices out there, but handling that for me was absolutely crucial because I've actually only been in the business about 15 years, but even back then there was no technology. I mean, there was just the beginning of, of software right. to manage vacation rentals. And I can remember when you had to plug in every single price for every season column by column and line by line for every property. And it was, you know, when you said, I'm going to do pricing, you you were setting out a month to dedicate right. for putting all your pricing in. And now, you know, the whole job is, you you have to think about it and look at it, but the, the, the tedious part is all gone. No, I agree with that. It yeah. Fun. It makes um, it a lot more fun when you can actually look at your rates and, and you can manage them as opposed to, like you say, manually working each one and having to think through it. Um, I mean, most people today wouldn't even know that that was the case because, yeah. you know, just like we take the internet for granted. When I, before I had this business, uh, we actually were hoteliers and I sat on a conference panel that the theme was, is it worthwhile for a small hotel to have a website? Can you imagine? Mm, I do. I, I remember. <laughs> I remember back too. Let me ask you this. What, who, who should be your first hires in a uh, foreign holiday rental? How do you, I mean, what's the hardest thing about managing these properties from the different parts of the world? Is it the people that you have to hire? You know, I think in, in any company, managing people and choosing people is a, one of the biggest challenges and one of the most important things that you have to do. So, so yes, it is, but I find that like people stick together and quite often I find people to hire from my owners because they know everybody in the area and often they employ people themselves. And many times we've employed the people that they employ. And, um, but I think that, you know, there's one thing that's more important than that. You first need someone who speaks your language. If you I don't speak that language, language. And who speaks that language? Language becomes unbelievably important. I, I speak French and mm, toler mm, tolerable Italian. I mean, I can do business in both. I can get by, 
Um, there may be some Italians who have a second opinion about that, but um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll claim it for the moment. I speak Spanish when I go over and they tolerate me. So they, if you're speaking Italian, they'll tolerate you too. For yeah, sure. no, they're they very do. tolerating. Are, are very, are very friendly and very forgiving. And a lot of them mm -hmm. speak English too, but um so yeah, I, I would, you know, make sure that you don't, you can only hire people you feel comfortable with. If you don't feel comfortable with them, you know, it's like a marriage. If you marry someone who, who has some, some faults that you don't like so much, but you think you can get over them, um, you can't, they'll get worse, <laughs> you know, they'll bother yeah, you true. more. And, and it's the same with, like, if you have second thoughts about them, keep looking. What is the hardest thing? Is it people? I didn't know. Is that the hardest thing about managing properties from different parts of the world? Um, it's gotten so much easier. I mean, you can have Zoom meetings, you can have Zoom inspections, you can walk about a house, but you know, it all depends how far you're going in a field. I mean, mm -hmm. most of my properties are in France and Italy. I can get there. And it's mm -hmm. one of the things I like doing. I can get there. I probably don't get everywhere every year, but every two years, I pretty much get everywhere. I have a few few properties in Austria and Switzerland. I can get there too. But um, in fact, in Switzerland, they're so well managed um, that I don't need to get there to manage them. I just need to get there to, to see that they're operating the same way they were and to see the owners again and keep up that contact with the owner. That's phenomenal. So, that know, really is. is. So yeah, the okay. owner relationship is as important as your employee relationship because uh -huh. they can leave you know, you can leave your employee, but the owners can leave you. So, you so how do you foster sure that you're... relationship when you're in different countries? How do you foster your owner relationships? I, I try and speak with them regularly. I have a wonderful associate, Adriana Kahlo, who is now also uh, working with my owners and uh, corresponding with them. And that's, you know, that's great. It's great for her. It's great for them. And so we share that relationship building now. Um, that takes a, a load off of me. And it also gives me a lot of confidence going forward that my owners will be happy when I'm not available. Well, there you go. So what advice would you give property managers who are looking to expand into other countries? Language, love what you do. Um, you've mentioned also finding people in, in those areas. What other types of things do they need to think about that maybe we don't even consider because we've not done it before? Well, I would hope anybody who is thinking of expanding into another country would be curious enough to do a lot of research if they don't know anything about it. Don't go somewhere where you don't know anything. Do your research first. Also, cultures vary greatly and you need to know how other cultures not just behave, but how they think. They have different patterns of thinking. They arrive at a conclusion in a different way. Americans sort of go in a straight line to the point. Other countries still are thinking, you know, crossing off all the, the no's before they can find the yes. And, and you need to know that. And, and just manners. You know, manners, manners. Are really, manners are really important. You know, if I'm with someone who doesn't say please and thank you, it really irritates me. There may be things that that I know, you know, everybody has their own protocol about how you move your hands. Italians use them a lot. Um, other cultures think you shouldn't move them at all. I know when I first moved to France and discovered, uh, as an American, I was taught that you always keep your hands underneath the table. The French are taught to always keep them on top of the table. And so that all the Americans that I was with in France were putting their hands up and down and up and down because they were, they really had this conflict about where, where do my hands go? But you need to know that you need to know basic manners and how they vary in country to, from country to country. And this seems like a small thing, but it's how, if you meet a new owner, how they respect you because they know that you've taken the time to learn about them you come across as someone who is knowledgeable and who cares. And this so, is about relationship. When it comes to owners, guys, it's always about relationship. And when I travel to different countries, uh, it's very much that when I travel to Rome, I'm just going to say Rome, for example, I usually stay at the same v VRBO uh, because I've created a relationship 
And that post, guys, it doesn't matter. Maybe not the first day she can't see me. She always comes to see me and we have coffee. I'm not kidding. And she'll take me. She's so very kind. And she's lived in Rome. She's from England, she's, but she's lived in Rome for many years. She was married to, a, to an Italian guy from Rome. And it was very unique for me that she wanted that type of relationship with her guest. Like she brings me wine. I bring her presents when I come. It's that's, that's how she does it. And so that's how I do it. And that's the hospitality side. Yeah. I actually wrote a note to myself here um, saying the power of champagne um, because yeah, when we had our hotel in France, um, we hosted everybody in the evening for before dinner to a glass of champagne. And I leave, I invite, if, if I'm at a rental or near a rental, um, I often do that. Uh, I sit down and have a glass of champagne with someone and we usually leave a bottle, much more mm -hmm. powerful than wine. Um, <laughs> it can make you I, agree to a lot of things you might not agree to otherwise. Oh, that's um, hilarious. Okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> the um they always uh, she always drops me a bottle of champagne and it's the good stuff too and then in another part of Italy uh where I was renting I was really surprised about this because it's different than the states guys when you're when you're outside and especially if you're in Europe it's a different mindset and like Susan is saying there's a different it's different manners you really do have to pay attention to that but I was really surprised when I got to my flat that there was fresh juice. No idea what fruit it came from. I have no idea. But there was fresh juice in the refrigerator. There was Prosecco and there was, I don't remember. They may have left bread or something, cookies. I don't know. But they literally, their care package was well chosen and they did it themselves. And I was like, who has time to do this? And yet they do for every rental. And you know, what is it? It's a thousand bucks, you know, like $1,500 for that or pounds, whatever. And you're just like, wow, you know, they have gone out of their way. So the level of hospitality for a VRBO uh, that I've seen in, in Italy is way different than that, say, in Berlin. Totally different. How We Grow is proud to partner with Limbrook Group, the experts in vacation payment solutions. When you choose Limbrook, you not only get a payment software that directly integrates into your reservation system, but decades of experience, giving you the best team when it comes to integrated homeowner payments and chargeback mitigation. Connect with them online at limbrookgroup.com to learn more. And so I'm, I'm assuming South Africa. Tell hospitable. South Africa, yeah. I mean, Italians are, are hospitable. Very, and, yeah. you know, it's a country that where tourism is so important. So mm -hmm. people grow up with tourists around them and they understand the power of relating to tourists, um, as I keep saying, I came from a, I had this momentarily 15 year hotel background. And um, so I relate to the hospitality part as well. And to the wow factor of that when you walk in, I love it when people's eyes light up, when they see mm -hmm. something, when they see mm -hmm. beauty. I, I once had an, I have an owner with a beautiful property. She's a landscape architect and she, created a wonderful garden in her property, but she also created for her grandchildren a dollhouse that was their size to live in. You know, not a dollhouse for a doll size, but a child size dollhouse. And she had a whole lineup of books with this high, with covers that she printed out. And it, it was a room that uh, had wonderful fabrics and everything was beautiful. And she said to me, you have to learn to appreciate beauty young. So I'm teaching my grandchildren how to appreciate beauty. And um, I don't know why, how I got here, but uh, <laughs> it's part of, of, of the wow factor. Hospitality. So people people see, see beauty and appreciate it and how you want them to appreciate it and maybe learn to appreciate what they haven't appreciated before by sharing it with them. And, and I, I think that any business really has to be a sharer. And uh, if you go to a new place and start your business there, you want to like it and love it and be able to share the things that have attracted you to it with other people, even if it's not meeting them, even by writing about it. 
mm -hmm. um, even in your descriptions. And I'm not sure where descriptions are going to go with AI these days, um, but yeah. I guess it's going to be pretty good, but I would hate that they lost all the personal touch because that would be a little bit of the fun that you miss. I actually like writing, so um, uh, I wouldn't want to well, give it all up. I'm ha happy to make it easier. So culture, culture is very important, not just understanding the culture where you, where you rent, but your culture at your company. Tell me a little bit about the culture at your company, Susan, you mentioned you had, uh, you know, other people that help you. And so tell me what kind of culture lends itself to um, international European rentals. You find people like yourself is what I'm saying, people that appreciate and love, or is there a, is there a different type of culture that you have with your employees? I'm talking specifically. I, employees. I think I certainly have done that, you know, um, they're not necessarily my age, but definitely compatible because you spend a lot of time in a, you know, I, mine's a very small company and we spend a lot of time together and um, we enjoy each other's company. And I think that in a, in a bigger company, you know, obviously everybody's not going to be alike, but you have to have a certain respect and pleasure in company. And that's why building, building teams, uh, I'm a great believer in, in in offsite meetings and um, activities together because seeing different sides of people, you learn about them and you need to take time with people and learn about what they're about in, in order to, to enjoy and to enjoy their company and to mm -hmm. learn. You know, everybody has bad days. I have bad days. I'm sure you probably have them from time to time, but maybe not. And, and, you know, people have to understand you. Um, I mean, I hope people understand me when I'm not quite on, but, but you do get days like that and you have to, tolerance is an important quality, um, tolerance and compassion and understanding all are part of, you know, how you work with the people that you're, you're working with. And you remind me so much of Scott Leggett in that, in that management style. If I, if I had to describe uh, his management style, it would be that tolerance, kindness, Well, he's patience. a lovely person. That doesn't surprise we, I, me. I know. He's just, he's amazing. How do you market your most luxurious properties? How do you um, market that type of property in Europe? What do you use for marketing? I think our, probably our most valuable tool is... Um, newsletters that we send out on a regular basis about certain properties and trying wow. to target them to the people that have stayed with us that might be interested in staying in this other property. So you do return rentals. You do a lot of, you do marketing to your guests who have previously come and loved where they stayed and you yeah, market other properties uh, to them. I take a lot of time to figure out who, who those people are too. Um, and, and yeah. We do. That's a great that's strategy. Most people do. But. That's that's my mo that's one of my favorite strategies. Scott and I were in a webinar I mean, yesterday the, talking about it. The funny thing is that that's what the owners want too. The owners who have a very valuable property worry a lot about who comes in it. It's not true that I know everybody who rents, but they would like to think that I do as I can, so that um, they won't say, "Well, who who asks me a lot of questions." And I, I have to, I have to, you know, act like I, I, I do know a lot about them. <laughs> All right. So I... tell me your favorite owner story, because I know you have deep relationships with your owners. What's your favorite story about an owner? Owner story. Well, um, I actually love the one about the dollhouse that me. That's a great story. Actually, we've been telling stories all day. That is a beautiful story. How about your favorite guest story? My favorite guest story. We had a, a very famous actress who's won an Academy Award, probably more than one. And she had her four children with her and she used her husband's name. And we were sitting having drinks quietly with the family. We knew who she was because we'd been warned by, by her travel agent back in those days that she was didn't want to be recognized. And so we were talking to them about where they'd been and they'd been to London and they'd been to Westminster Abbey. And she said, this was the most terrible experience here. She was just being an ordinary person with her four children. And um, they were mobbed 
by people running up and grabbing her and wanting her autograph. And she said, we had to leave. And my children were very upset and my husband was very upset. And um, she said, but we went to Amiens Cathedral today and um, everybody just left us alone. It was wonderful. The French are so considerate. They just don't do that. Um, and this is very true about the French, that they, they would never do anything as, as thoughtless as, and impolite as that. But then what was lovely about the story was that her five-year-old went and grabbed her mother's shawl and she put it over her head and then she walked around. She says, I'm going incognito. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's um, mm. what she did as the best little actress. She dressed up like a peasant and said, I'm going incognito. So That's I imagine adorable. she copied that from her mother. She did it well, with great diploma. And I think she's now an actress. It's interesting that at anyway. that it's interesting that different people's lives, and this is part of what you were talking about. You were talking about the experience of beautiful things, uh, being able to appreciate the beauty that surrounds you and I think being able to appreciate what you're talking about being able to appreciate the guest in that same way their uniqueness and the way that they look on life that's very interesting too getting to know people is fun period Susan it, it is. is fun and that's why I'm in this business is uh, you know having having friends having connections knowing people is you know what would life be without it it's certainly what gives you a good life so it would be a little less flowers I love flowers I think that that would be a little bit less um I want to uh give you an opportunity if there's anything else you want to give advice for other than the I was very very interested in letting people know how they could um have vacation rentals in different countries and still manage it that not only is it possible but it is very pleasurable and, but if there's something else that you'd like to talk about, I'd like to give you an opportunity. Well, I mean, uh, along, along that line is when you're looking at where you want to expand, you know, do make sure that you're going to want to be going there uh, regularly and that you can make, make connections with the people, as I said, and travel there and learn about it. I think that you want to pass on to the people that work with you your love of the places. And um, I, I think that people have to just make that connection both with people, with the places and, and with their properties. I, I wouldn't take on a property that I don't like. Uh, and I have seen every single property that we have on file. As I said, I would like to expand in, in South Africa. You know, I've been very slow doing that, despite the fact that, that I absolutely love the country and how much good it does. Tourism and vacation rentals have been badly maligned, but I think the Italians more than anyone and the South Africans both appreciate the value of tourism. And mm -hmm. in Rome, you complain about over-tourism, but our business very much works in getting people outside of Rome and um, exploring wonderful communities where there aren't very many tourists. But tourism saves old properties. Um, it also saves wild animals. That's a different story. Mm. But in Italy, where there's such a wealth of beautiful things and valuable properties True. that crumble if they don't have an injection of cash, tourism yes. is a way that you can keep these places alive and bring these villages back to life. I, mm -hmm. life. I think that a lot of people have heard how Italy was giving away whole towns for a dollar or properties for a dollar if you fix yes. it up. And and obviously, if you're going to do that, you're going to be bringing in tourism too. And so so Italy realizes the important of tourism, importance of tourism. And for a manager to realize how they can help in sustaining, use the, the, History. the word sustainability, but sustaining history and architecture and yes, uh, all those things that are so valuable in, in our world today in which from which we learn so many lessons, but get such pleasure from that, that I think that's a very valuable thing for anybody who's spreading out is, is, is to look where the areas where tourism is, is useful, not just go to the big cities. 
but go out into the areas that they can bring something to and add something to. I absolutely love driving in Italy. Guys, if you go over to Italy, rent a car. I'm just saying it's the same side of the road. I remember saying to my husband, we were coming down the, st- we went to the, uh, to the Italian Alps. Okay. On the other, we didn't go into Switzerland, but I was driving because it's just so beautiful. And I said to Nehemia, my husband, I said, these, these structures, these homes that we're looking at, these estates are stunning and they're crumbling around each other. They're crumb- crumbling around each other. Uh, the, the the, the structures themselves. I said, and these people have lived in there for what, hundred years? Maybe their ancestors going back a hundred years have owned this property. And in, unless there's tourism, you know, how are they going to, they're out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, these are castles. And I just was like, you know, I'll bet they don't have the money to do what they need to do there yet. It's incredible. Uh, and so I, I think that's a, I think that what Italy's doing is phenomenal. I do. It is. If I wanted to do property management, I I would love to to be there. I don't do property management. Just say <laughs> my own properties. Well, yes. Oh, you, you always can. You know, everything you do leads to the next thing you're going to do. I believe that the That's things true. that you think haven't, you know, are are not connected to what you're doing in the future. They all relate. I mean, my education was history of art, and you know. You know, for so long, I thought, how use how useless is this as a as an education, and then but now I'm in Italy and I had started studied Baroque architecture, so um, I'm now surrounded by what I studied and uh, certainly appreciate it. We go to little obscure towns where they have a manuscript, a Hebrew manuscript, because my my husband studies uh, biblical uh, manuscripts, and so we'll go to these little obscure towns, and um, he always. Uh, I always find a place to stay there. It doesn't matter. I'm always the one that does that. I'm so pleasantly surprised that I am able to get up in the morning and walk out into uh, from my VRBO or Airbnb or wherever I stay with you know whatever friend has recommended this place or something. And each town has its own in Italy. Okay, I'm in love with Italy, obviously, because that's what I'm talking about. Uh, it has well, its own little coffee well. shop. It's, yeah. it's a it has so many riches to offer. It's it's unique and it's beautiful and it's kind. It's a very kind, hospitable place. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much for coming to share um, a oh, picture. Thank you so much. <laughs> your picture of what it looks like to rent to rent these homes to manage these homes in a in in Europe and around. It's a beautiful picture and. Um, I am really grateful for you being willing to share and willing to serve on the board that you do, uh, because I know you're really busy, but giving back to this industry, you are such a giving, loving person, and um, I'm I'm really honored to have you and call you a friend, so I want to say thanks. Oh, well, thank you so much. I really enjoy talking to you. I always enjoy talking to you. We always have a good time. uh, So I look forward to doing that more. This episode of How We Grow was brought to you by Limbrook Group. To find out more about how Limbrook Group can help to grow your vacation rental business, visit limbrookgroup.com. Make sure to search for How We Grow in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found and hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. On behalf of the team here at Inhabit, thanks for listening.